Okay, hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, welcome to Masterclass number 103. We should have intro music. That would be cool. Note to our note to self. You can add it in later. Yeah, yeah. But like, <laughs> you know, we should be root for real life. Yeah. Yeah. Happy Thursday, everybody. Yeah, it's joining Thursday. us live. Thanks for coming. Welcome. We appreciate you. Today we're we gonna talking have about we're gonna have a fun super uh, fun i guide master class where we we do trivia mm -hmm. and we we touch on um the history of i guide and yeah. um and we ask you a bunch of questions so see how much you know what um, do you know like i don't want to give you a hint but we just put out a blog that's like our 10th Shh. anniversary blog no oh, it's only fair like in, uh, it's not fair it's at fair. all it's fair i'm gonna help you guys out <laughs> so we, we put out a blog so if you go on goiguide.com I'm not gonna tell you where it is because then you have to look. But if you if you go to our blogs, you'll see that there is a um, like in the news section, a uh, uh, 10th anniversary um, you know blog that talks about our company history over the last 10 years. Um, I've been with the company for eight of those 10 years. Yeah, it's so, it's so long. It is so long. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Go us. I think it's good. It's good. <laughs> it's good. It's um, great. Okay, before we start, I just want to say uh, that this is the last masterclass of the summer. We pretend like we take a summer break. We, we don't, don't actually. There's no break. We just like to pretend. And also, uh, you guys are probably doing stuff. So we're doing this really for you. We don't want you guys to miss out on great content. So yeah. we take the summer off because you guys are busy and we get our ducks in a row and then we figure out great content for the fall. Yeah, go camping. Don't want yeah, this. get in the water. <laughs> Do whatever you need to do to refresh and rejuvenate and spend time with the kids and you know uh, and then we'll come back in the fall yeah and uh, question and answer or q a webinars will continue throughout the summer yes sir um so that's cool so you can still participate in those if you want um yeah other than that uh please join the facebook group if you haven't already and uh please um subscribe to our youtube channel and if you haven't done so yet please update to the latest firmware yes on the, your planix camera system heavens if you're using about one, that. uh because it's it's good <laughs> it's so good very very good so please use it um <laughs> yeah we got a lot of feedback last year if you've been with us since last year about some changes we made to the firmware and we heard you because we listen Listen. And so we changed it back, but we also made some improvements. So if you aren't on the latest firmware, you are not realizing all of those amazing benefits that we've included for, for you. Potential. The, that's what I was going for. Thank you, Christopher. Uh, you got it. Shall we jump in? <laughs> Let's start. All right. Okay. Question number one, Christopher. No, you do it. <laughs> you do it. What is iGuide short for? Okay, that's a great question. <laughs> Are you pretending need, like you're thinking about Yeah, it? I need to think about this. What, is, what does I guide mean and kind of where did that come from? Is that, yes. Okay. So it's kind of like iPod and iMac. Is it like that? Is it because it's we want to ride I, on Apple's coattails? Oh, that's a spicy question. Of course not. No, what does it stand for? It stands for Interactive Property Guide. Oh, cool. That's yeah. awesome. That yeah. makes sense. It does make sense because we're interactive and it's yeah. one of our key advantages because you have full control over your experience yeah. with the guidance through the property. Neat. Um, you know the answer to this question, so don't pretend like you don't. We're already okay? on question two. That was fast. Question okay. Two. Question two. What are the names of Planetar's two co-founders? Oh, I know that. Um, so if you want to play along, you can put <clears throat> your answers to who you think, what you in think the, the answers are in the chat or in the Q and A. Yep. So does the chat work with this or I click, I put hello, yeah. but no one said hello back. They, that's rude. It's not nice. Maybe yeah. they just want to listen. You know, they're here to be entertained, <laughs> which All is right. fine. It's also fine. Oh, the Q and A works. Okay. The Q and A works. Thank you. Thanks, Chad is Corey. disabled. I knew it. I knew it. That's what I thought. Okay, I'm going to turn. Corey, I appreciate it. Okay, you guys, you think amongst yourselves. While I you think amongst out. yourselves. Well, how do you turn a chat off? You know? I don't know. Settings, I maybe? With it. Um, I don't know how you turn it off. Show chat previews. Yeah, I don't either. 
so it must be all right uh, don't worry about the chat she's a q a but you can yeah you can okay. put your answers in the q a if you know the answer the question was uh, what are the names of the two co-founders two co-founders so the, their names are kevin and alex kevin and alex and they started the company or is this the next i don't want to answer a question that's already no we didn't put the year no. 2013 yeah officially yes yeah that's well i mean 2023 minus 10 yes 2013 Thank that's you. why oh, we that didn't stick that in there for the trivia because math yeah, 10 mind. is good number for mathing <laughs> okay cool <laughs> where was planetar birthed out of in what city of the world was planetar birthed out of because we're global now yeah. we're all over the place i know, know? Is. so i'm not going to answer i'm going to say Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, you got it, Corey. Yeah. Ooh. So the answer is Canada. Kitchener slash Waterloo, Canada. Oh, yeah. It's considered the twin cities. They're side by side and they're kind of interchangeable unless you live in Waterloo and you don't like to be associated with Kitchener, but technically, Kitchener, Waterloo. Um, is there are there are there any other famous tech companies that are from here? Possibly, starting with the letter B. This is set up. It's BlackBerry. <laughs> it's a setup. <laughs> it's a trap. <laughs> That's right. It's a trap. It's Star a Wars trap. reference. Okay, here. I'll share my screen. Um, <laughs> I put the wrong thing up. That's why. Hold on. Share my screen. That's yeah. Right. Here we go. Share. This okay, that's where we're at. We're actually right where the smile, kind of right where the smile town is. Yeah. See smile town? Yeah. That's where our office is. It's a public address on Google. You can find it if you really want to. But that's where we're located. That's where we're sitting right now, actually. Yeah. What is that? Is that a fish? The fish, it's my Google like profile picture. Not a bird? Not yeah, a I don't pigeon? know why. I just picked it random. Right it was funny. And it was a fish. That's interesting. Okay. I'm a, I'm a weird dude anyway yeah there it is concur <laughs> awesome all right number three no that was number three number four what was the name of the first eye guide camera is it did it have like a code name yeah everything is a code like avalon <laughs> or like <laughs> like uh <laughs> minas tirith or something cool <laughs> I mean, put your guesses in. I, I don't know why I think it would have a Lord of the Rings. like. Curtain. I know, that's just you. That's just you. We need to get a backdrop, too. This is yeah, really sad, this really backdrop. Weird. My vest is not I think cool. I point it out every single time I sit here. And I'm still, we still don't do anything different. <laughs> once famous. Yes, the once famous Blackberry. Exactly. Yes, that was a reference um, back to that. Okay. Chris, what's your guess? What was the first eye guide camera called? Uh, oh, but I know what it's called. I know. We're just supposed to pretend. Just tell them. Uh, it's um, called. So you want me to say the answer? Yeah. Oh, okay. Saying. It's IMS three. The very first one. Yeah. So IMS four was the one that we all used, um, like actually in the world to capture things, and it was really cool. It had this like mast on the top of these laser emitters and it would shoot out like actual pew, pew, visible pew. red it made that noise yeah it would shoot out visible red lasers and people were terrified they, they'd see it and they go oh am i going to be okay and you'd say no you got to leave it was awesome um but the uh good way to get people out of your shot <clears throat> if you want to see pictures of it they're in that blog that i mentioned you guys mm -hmm. can go see we should go link it later all the different um camera types that we've come out with but i mean you know like IMS five was preceded by IMS four, and IMS three mean, came before that. You said five was preceded. Yeah. Before? Okay. Sure. So English is that how fine. You say that? I'm not sure. I'm now questioning it. Anyway, well, IMS there was an IMS one and an IMS two, but they never made it into the real world. What does IMS stand for? Is that a question on here? No, because we did that in our other trivia. Did we? Mm -hmm. Okay. But I don't Indoor know if anybody... or interior mapping system. See, there's a code name for it. We were right. It was a code name for everything. So I guide means something. I must mean something. Oh, 
it's all linked. It's all good. Um, okay. When was the Planix camera launched? It's a great In what question. Year. Bonus points for month. I know because I was there. You were shut up. Yeah. Do you guys want to guess? Are you I'm like also in the training videos? Yeah. <laughs> Is that how you know? <laughs> that must be how you know. That's how I know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, few answers, right? Because we're in 2023. MS5. What do we think? What do we Jared, think? So I'll give you some history. Oh, history lesson. History is fun. Uh, I like history. So oh. when COVID happened, um, it made sort of virtual tours really popular. desirable, popular, yes. yes. And so much so that we couldn't make enough IMS fives. And there were like parts shortages as well. So oh, supply right. chains were all like messed up. And like, so we just, we had a waiting list. It was like, it was huge. Hundreds and hundreds of people wanted to buy the camera and they just couldn't. Um, so Planix came out after that uh, by what, like a year, I guess. So mm. 2020, 2021. So Planix came out in 2021. It did. What month did we launch it in? The bonus. Uh, you should ship, know this. ship or launch both so we launched the pre-order in march and then we shipped april 1st ish i think yep Probably. ish <laughs> it was in april i didn't ask for the date i just asked for the month you yeah. got it you're right just he's winning um okay how many square feet have we drafted since planetar started come on guys you can guess this yeah one. you guys should definitely guess how many square feet have been drafted since the company started total square footage i honestly forget so i'm gonna go look it up is this cheating yeah not really was this what you used yes it's in the blog remember i didn't read the blog <laughs> i'm kidding of course i read the blog <laughs> Okay. It, like it's probably a lot, right? It's a lot. And we don't have an exact number. It's just like it's more than because I mean there are currently people drafting right now. Somebody, oh yeah. Exactly. Billions. It's over a billion square yeah. feet. It's pretty a lot. It's pretty a lot. <laughs> That's good English. <clears throat> yep. Uh okay. We mentioned at the, you know earlier that we're now a global company. Yes. How many countries are we located in? I have to look it up again. Like maybe two. Not that more than that. Canada, oh, that's a lot. America. Yeah. No. Where? Any? Any guests? Globally. How me. many countries? Like we're in a lot. Right? You know, Canada, America, <laughs> Australia, Europe. Is Europe a country? I'm just kidding. Of course. UK, yeah. Italy, Spain. Just like Africa's one country, right? Portugal. Um, do we have any cameras in? Uh, I'm not really familiar with South America. Is any in there? Maybe. Yeah. There's one of our Ecuador early. For a bit, but I, I don't really. There was a guy in, uh, we had a, a provider in Uruguay for oh, a while. Cool. Yeah. South Africa was. Yep. UK, Ireland. Yeah. Italy. Yeah, maybe, 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 yeah. Knew Greece. That. Greece knew that too. Um, okay, how many countries? I'm going to say the answer. Okay. More than 40 countries. Yeah. It's, we're, pre, we're a big deal. Big deal. We've got a ways to go. We want to be in all the countries in the world, <laughs> but we're getting there. Um, okay. What were our three most recent product releases this year? from the blog as well oh yeah that's true well, they're like, intimately involved in all of them but well, they're like, already forgotten in my head, they're like features <laughs> product you know what i mean so i had to think yeah. about that for a second but yeah no that makes sense yep makes sense yeah pretty sure we called them out as product releases as well but it's fine words fluid so there's Any been guesses? a lot of uh um 
Yeah, you got yeah. it. Yeah, real got time one. tagging. Real that was time a big one. That one really, people really like that more than, not that more than we expected it to, but you always hope that people will like things, yes. but everybody really liked that one. And I used it uh, um, on a video shoot the other day. And yeah, it's really mm. good. It's really quick. Just add a photo to the. It's like tool. Neat. easy and convenient, which is what That's we great. wanted it to be. It's great. It worked out. <laughs> And it's actually super useful. All right, what about the other ones? The other two. Okay, the other two. I'll just describe them. So the first one is iGuide Preview. Okay. We did a whole webinar on iGuide Preview. It's uh, it's very cool. Um, if you don't use it, I encourage you to, um, because it's pretty neat. Mm -hmm. What it allows you to do, yeah, faster see? previews. You got it, Corey. Um, the uh, iGuide Preview allows you to um, basically see your iGuide drafted nearly instantly after you submit it. Not instantly, it takes like a minute or two, depending on the size of the property, but um, <clears throat> uh, it's all like, you know, or mostly AI powered. So that means that, um, you know, it's available without really anybody touching it. And if you want to use it, you can. So that means if you order a standard or premium iGuide and you want to share it with your client and they're not super fussy about the measurements or having them right away anyway, um, you can share the tour with them as a preview and then they'll be able to access it and navigate it with, you know, a floor plan um, without any measurements or anything though, uh, until the standard or premium I got is ready. And then it will just auto update once update. the drafter, you know, finishes it off. Yeah. That's kind of awesome. neat. It, yeah. it basically means that it opens up the possibility that you could update your, or rather upload your I got data like right from the home. Yeah, on site. On site. And then you could get access to something, you know, pretty close to the final product like right away. It is, it was really cool. It's very really cool. cool. Yep. Um, and last but not least. Sorry, forget. <laughs> Gotta read the notes again. I'm old. You guys have to cut me some slack. Like I can't remember. It's like goldfish. It's like, <laughs> it was there and now it's gone. Yeah. It's gone. Uh, it was the most recent. Oh, yeah. We just like two weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, so the <laughs> last thing is uh, DWG or. Um, a DWG floor plan <laughs> <laughs> um, as an add-on. So you can order an iGuide standard or iGuide premium, and you can have a, 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 a DWG file added on. That DWG file is used in, if you're not in architecture, engineering, or any field that uses DWGs, they're used for um, by designers, architects, and engineers to create drawings for their own purposes. So that's, you know, for changing spaces and planning for spaces um, um, when you're when you're you know moving walls around and making decisions about how to design them. So they're typically working in AutoCAD uh, or Revit. And this file is native to those. You can just bring it in and use it. Um, and so it's an excellent head start on their projects. So rather than have Someone in one of those fields go out to the property, measure it manually, you know, take all that data, input it into AutoCAD. Um, if you yourself aren't in that industry, you could help them by uh, capturing the data for them, creating the eye guide, and then giving them that DWG file um, so that they can start getting their work done. You know, um, it's a head start, which means it's not a complete and final drawing. Uh, so there's a little bit of work to do there, but um, that's very specific to each individual person. Um, so it's that way, like by design, like they often have work they need to do that we couldn't do for them because we don't know the final product. So yeah, DWG, available now. Constantly innovating here at Planetar. Yeah. Which is constantly coming up with new stuff. So always yeah, stay tuned. Going. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. And if you are interested in learning more about DWG, um, I'm not sure if the recording is available yet, but it will be uh, for the masterclass that Rob did a couple of weeks ago. A few weeks ago and um we do have i believe we have a knowledge base article on it as well so you can always reach out through support ticket or just check out the support desk for more information on dwg stuff i got preview real-time tagging real -time and tagging. dwg all have resources available yes to learn more of course yeah so go to goiguide.com or the knowledge base yes where the support desk is absolutely Okay, last but not least, I feel like you kind of gave this a little bit away in your answer about DWG stuff. Oh, sort of, kind of. You didn't. It. You didn't ruin it. You just kind of let people cheat. Yeah. Um, in what industries do, is iGuide technology used? 
where are all of the ways, what are all of the ways that iGUIDE technology is used? Some use cases. It's a good question. Some pretty obvious ones, of course, especially if you're joining live and you know what you use it for. <laughs> but uh, there are some interesting other use cases and in industries that you might not be aware of. So, well, let's start off with the the easiest one: residential real estate. That's where we started. Yeah. That's where we live. It's pretty where useful. Comfortable. Very useful. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I mark chair over there. Yeah, across the board, which is great. Um, that. Insurance and restoration. Yeah. What do they use it for? They use it to document claims, insurance claims. <laughs> You've like blanked for a minute. <laughs> I know. So they again, do. There's, there's a lot of holes up here. They do a thing. They do. They do a lot <laughs> of good things. So they use it to document uh, a loss or whenever there's damage yes. or <clears throat> some event that damages a property, like a hurricane comes through and there's flood damage and fire damage or whatever. Or Something for which you need to submit an insurance claim. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know, someone or maybe an adjuster themselves would, yeah. you know, scan a property and then turn it into an eye guide. And then they would be looking at getting an ESX file or something that they can import into their software of choice, but that's, almost always a software called Xactimate. Mm -hmm. And um, when that's done, it gives them uh, a really robust set of data, you know, lots of 360 images and uh, um, floor plans and measurement data, obviously. And then it's automatically, um, not automatically, but it's, you know, drafted into Xactimate so that it saves them time sketching. So that's, um, you know, a big head start on getting that claims process sorted out faster. What else? Who else uses it? Uh, party planners. Um, they should. They, and they should. Yeah. Well, There's I shot a like, gap there. There's a, that's a use case for sure. I shot an event <clears> space <throat> years ago, and I just thought it was so cool because if you if you have an eye guide of a like a big open space, you can use the measurement tool to like draw things in. So you can plan out your tables if you're going to have a wedding. That was neat. Actually, that's not entirely untrue. I know a couple of people in the states that um use it so what they've done a few wedding venues yeah so that's event that's like kind of like party planning, party planning. <laughs> digital beers done digital, digital, beers. digital beers all around yeah, yeah. so um <laughs> is that like a gift Corey, of a beer yeah know. Corey's winning he's for sure winning yeah Corey's definitely so winning. he says in real estate insurance restoration architecture it feels like you read the blog feels like you figured Did it you just out have it open Corey and just like <laughs> looking at it because that's what I kind of thought I know yeah yeah um, construction. Yes, this is another one. Yeah. So who, why do, uh, why would anybody in construction use iGUIDE? Construction is really cool because what you can do is you can document a property and you can see the state and condition like remotely, right? So if you want to measure or at least get eyes on some progress, someone can scan a property and then they can send that to whoever needs to see it and they can review the site without having to go there, which is pretty cool. It saves you some travel time. Mm -hmm. um, you can also document the property in multiple stages in its life cycle, I guess you'd call it. So yes. that means, you know, before renovation, during and after, that's pretty neat. Um, and, you know, you can get a real sense of the whole project and, and what occurred there. It's pretty cool. Um, you know. Facilities management? Facility management is a neat one. Facility management makes a lot neat. of sense because um, facility managers have to manage sometimes, you know, a few or many properties in a portfolio. And yep. so in order to get information about a property, they have to either physically go there or call up the local, you know, property manager person and just ask them like, what about this? And what about that? And then is that window still broken and whatever. So Similar to construction, um, I got gives facility managers the ability to see, you know, a site snapshot in time, if that makes any sense. And, you know, manage the facility. Yeah. I mean, well, it goes beyond that, right? They can see it. They can see if there's damage. They can try to estimate costs. Yes. Um, but then they can also plan using the measurement. They can plan spaces and they can say, okay, well, this space is going to be for this particular group in an office and this space is going to be for something else. They can plan things like carpet updates, things that require square footage. Um, that's true for construction and insurance as well. You know, it allows you to estimate costs for doing jobs um, that are related to like wall areas, like painting or um, estimate costs for swapping windows out and things like that, because you can measure them. Yep. Figure out how big they are and get, get your estimates done that way. 
Real-time tagging is a great asset for insurance and facility it, management as well. Yeah, real-time real tagging is very much so a useful. slam dunk for like every industry. Yeah. Big, big fan over here. Big fan, yeah. yeah. We're fans. Um, and last but not least, I mean, there are, I'm sure there are edge cases as well, but forensics. Well, that's true. Yeah. Documenting uh, crime scenes and whatnot. Yep. Mm -hmm. Fire forensics as well as police forensics. Pretty cool. We're doing lots of things. We're constantly innovating and constantly uh, finding new ways for the technology to drive value in different industries. Uh, if you guys have any questions, put them in the chat. I can see yeah. one already, so we're going to answer yeah. it. Um, oh. So it's a feature request. Outdoor tours. I have a scrapyard that wants a tour done quarterly. Hmm. Uh, this is Corey. So uh, you could do that right now mm -hmm. uh, with a Radix. Yep. You could go and you could shoot it um, and get um, most of the functionality. I mean, if it's a scrapyard, I'm going to guess you don't you necessarily don't care about measurements. <laughs> It'd yeah. be very cost effective uh, to use the radix, capture it and get get the tour more or less um, there for you for like navigation. Um, yeah. And I'm, the point cloud is there if you need it. Yeah, I would like to see a virtual walkthrough of a scrapyard. Same. That sounds awesome. Like an automotive one as well. As like inventory. In yeah. So if you just need it for visuals, just do a radix. You that would that be today. handy. Actually, you know what's funny? So I used to own a real POS. Pardon the expression. Uh, minivan it was a nissan quest and it was so I thought you were referring to point of sale i was no, like no i'm the rude one i'm not the rude one we'll cut okay. that out of the video later. so uh you know you'd call a wrecking yard and you'd be like hey do you have this vehicle and they they wouldn't really it was weird they'd say maybe kind of like it was awkward so it was always would have been cool if i could have just gone on the tour and i'm like oh there it is yeah that's a that's a nissan quest a lot of little things broke on it little like fit and finish things like the seat belt buckles like there's a little plastic oh, cow yeah, that would yeah, fall yeah. off and like so you'd always be looking for these weird little parts huh. but um they're sort of relatively rare so you know it was difficult on the phone anyway so you can do that today yeah today um okay, before we before we're done because we're at our 30 minutes we're that's it we i'm is. just going to show you guys something you can figure out what tab so uh if you go to our website all the details that you want about basic features are here. I got preview, tags has real-time tags in it. Um, and then our, uh, our DWG is attached to um, a couple of these pages. So you can see uh, that DWG here on the facility manager. Oh, also fun fact, we're having a 10th anniversary sale right now. I'll just show you guys that, check this out. And um, I'm sure you already all have cameras, but if you, Buy another camera you get a 10th anniversary limited edition mug it's pretty cool limited edition very exciting yeah They're pretty awesome look the 10 has the egg it does pretty neat. <laughs> i love it i love it i love it all right well this is gonna slice that's it we're all done we're so good Win. at this <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you in the fall. Um, join those Q&A webinars. If you have any questions, give us a call, submit a ticket. You know how to get a hold of us if you need to. And uh, have a great summer. Have a great summer. Happy 10th anniversary yeah. to us. <laughs> Bye.